Family, when God promised Abraham a very special promise, specifically when God made the great promise and covenant to Abraham, which we find in Genesis 12, 2 and 3, he said, I will make you into a great nation. Many of you have heard this scripture before. You've read this scripture before. But I want you to take a different look at this scripture, at the text, and draw something else from it. He said, I'll make you into a great nation. And I will what? I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be what? A blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, ah, I will curse, and all peoples of the earth, read, will be blessed through you. Twice here, God says we will be a blessing to others. These verses, family, serve as a snapshot of God's great plan. And Jesus, hear me, mandate and global mission to bring all people back to him through us as a result of what he has done in our lives that we cannot do for ourselves. Again, position for the blessing to be a blessing. Here's something that is very important. As we move into this next season of our lives that we, we do not allow ourselves to have a spirit of entitlement, but a spirit of generosity. And so I want to examine briefly with you scripture regarding how God has positioned us to prosper, hear this, and not to be greedy or selfish when it comes to wealth and riches. The things, hear me, that he has stored up for you and I to experience. Again, God is not happy or pleased when his people are broke. He's not happy or pleased when we're struggling in any aspect of our lives. Give me a big amen if you're with me. So 1 Timothy 6.3, in the English Standard Version says, for we, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of this world. And here's what he says, all things are from God, and God has given all things what? Purpose. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. I don't care if it's a relationship. I don't care if it's your relationship with money, your assignment, whatever that is. If God is not first, then there will be a malfunction as well as corruption in whatever it is that he has called you, to, you and I to do. So the word of God says, consider the purpose of your things. Consider the purpose of your time, your talent, your treasure, who you are, your life. And either use them, share them, oh, share them with others, or pass them on to better someone else's life. That is the purpose for which they are made. Don't just cling to things for the sake of having them. But we receive the things for the sake of being a blessing to others that God brings into our circle. Fact number two, Proverbs 10, 20. Says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord does what? The blessing of the Lord does what? The blessing of the Lord, another translation from the Hebrew, actually when you look at the Hebrew, it says it makes one fat. Spiritually, mentally, socially, economically, the blessing of the Lord causes increase. The blessing of the Lord, listen to me, causes a wave of blessings in our lives that we didn't even foresee. Are you with me? And so he says, and he addeth, here's the beautiful thing, and he addeth no sorrow with it. 
This verse oftentimes is misinterpreted, but this verse also reminds us to appreciate, hear me, success, which is clearly influenced by God to run intervention with anything that would try to subtract, take away, or divide anything in our lives. Next fact we find in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, the Lord reminded the people of Israel, hear this, that he should, that he had freed them from Egypt and led them into the promised land, which was a good land, a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which we, you, I will eat bread without what? Scarcity. In other words, you'll have more than enough. So when we say more than enough, or more in 2024, it's not just a good saying, it's not just a hype statement. It's scripture. Why? Because God does not want you and I to experience scarcity in any aspect of our lives. This does not just pertain to money. It does not just pertain to our cupboards. It pertains to every aspect of our lives. God does not want us struggling. Because if we're struggling, we can't help anybody else out. Struggle don't help nobody. Scarcity is not a benefit to anybody because if I only have a little. I remember being brought up in the South. One of the things that I loved about people in the South to this day is that whatever they have, whatever little that they have. I watched my big mama. I, I even watched my mama. I, I watched them. Watched that they were willing to share it. Although they didn't have a lot. I want to share what I have. Why? Because I realize even if it's a little, God blessed me with it. And he blessed me with it to be a blessing to those who are in need. To those who are hungry. Come on. To those who need a glass of water. To those who need a pork chop. No, I mean, to those. A lot of pork chops, hog mogs, and all kind of stuff being cooked in the south. Somebody say thank you for deliverance. But here's what God is saying. He urges the people. Do me a favor. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't miss this. If you don't miss anything in the message. Don't miss this going into this new season. Not to forget him. And not only not to forget him, but not to forget what he warned them of. Which takes us to verse 17. And he says this. Beware. After I bless you, beware, lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. Don't be trying to get me to give and tithe and do this and do that and pull on my resources. Oh, you must have forgot who gave it to you. Hello? You must have forgot... That the God, the great I am God, that loves you so much, he made sure that you had that skill, the ingenuity, come on, the intelligentsia, to create new streams of wealth. So when he assists you in not only creating a stream of wealth, whether it be work, whether it be your business, and then he gives you this innate ability to expand and start to create other streams of income. Don't think it's out of your own gifting and anointing that comes from you. No, God says, look, it comes from me. Do not be confused. Everything you are is because of me. Everything that I placed in you, I placed it in you. You didn't just so happen to develop this on your own. Come on, somebody. Your gift, your talent. Come on, your genius, I gave it to you. So whatever you do, don't forget 
who your source is. Don't forget to prioritize me. So we said 2024 is all about faith's expectation for more, right? Listen, for more, repeat after me, for more doors to be open for me and mine and those who God is preparing for me to bless. There are some of you prophetically, listen to me, there are going to be new doors that open in this season that you never, you, you didn't even think about, you hadn't been praying about, open. There, God's just going to open the door. Why? Because you position, watch it, you position him as first. So he said, not, okay, I'm first. You, you haven't forgot. You, you haven't gotten amnesia. Watch this. Are there any parents here who... Like, you know, I'm proud of my kid. You know, let me just do this for them. And you do it. Okay? That's five of us. Okay, the rest of y'all will keep praying for you. But, you know, good parents, they just want to, you know, they want to put a blessing on their kids. They, listen to me. Good parents, good fathers, good, 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 good mothers, always actually thinking about how, how, can, I, how can I bless my baby? I, that, that's, how, that's how Dr. Micheline is. I was like, can we go somewhere sometime without you thinking about? <laughs> what about me? It's nothing like a good mom or daddy. It's nothing like a good grandmother, grandfather. Hello? See, see, we've, listen to me. We've allowed all of that to get lost in translation as we've evolved as mankind. And, 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 and so, you know, we... We don't think that we need to honor our parents, honor our grandparents, the elders. In this house, we're always going to honor the elders here. Don't you do nothing to not one of these elders. Don't you do nothing to none of these elders. Don't you do nothing to none of these kids because we got a problem. We got a big problem. Matter of fact, I'd have made it clear in the past to my daughter's husband, do something to him if you want to. I got a different kind of blessing for you. It's a different kind of anointment that comes over me if you do something to mine. So if you can't bless him, leave him alone. Don't hurt mine. That was just extra right there. All right, all right, all right. Proverbs 3, 9. Here we go. Here we go. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, everything that you take in. Let me share something with you. Life begins with the principle of first. Life begins with the principle of what? First. Whatever we crave creates a wave. That's what the Lord gave me this morning. I had to go back and I had to, I had to pop it in. Whatever we crave most creates a wave in our life. Listen, we create, we crave a lot of things. How many of you ever craved a certain dish? And man, when you fix that dish and you just kept eating and eating and that food just starts to create a wave of increase in your midsection. <laughs> Can I get any witnesses? See, whatever you crave the most will cause increase in your life. Are you with me? The question is, what, what have you, what are you craving right now at the start of this new season? Here's what I really believe. When we crave God most, he creates more waves of increase. Why? Because he's first. Can't get enough. I hunger and thirst for the Lord God Almighty. Why? Why? Because he is the one who fills me. He is the one who quenches my thirst. He is the one, hear me, who, who, who takes care of my appetite. I, 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 I beseech you, brothers and sisters, by, by, by the anointing of God. 
God gave this to me for my, my, my uh, master class yesterday. I told the people, you should have been there, it was packed out. I told the people, I said, look, you, in this season, you're going to have to understand how to feed your soul in a different way so that you'll get a different result out of your life this year than ever before. Can I ask you a question? Have you thought about what your soul needs? What's on the menu for you to feed your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your imagination? Come on, somebody. What's on the menu? What's on the menu? I, I just have one question. Is God on the menu? Is God first on the menu? Here's what we have to understand. Whatever is first sets up everything else for the blessing. So whenever we place God first, he sets us up for the blessing, hear this, to be a blessing. I don't know about you, but I, me and Dr. Michelin, we have these conversations all the time. Because when we're blessed, we want to bless other people. And sometimes, listen to me, we have these seasons where we want to be more blessed because we want to be a bigger blessing. Have you ever wanted to be a bigger blessing? Like, I'm looking forward to the day, like on a regular basis, not like once a year, every now and then, but like on a regular basis, oh, oh, it's 5,000? Nope, no problem. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Oh, you need a car? Mm. All right, let's go down to the dealership. Mm. Oh, you just started your business? Okay, what you need? Mm. Imagine being in that position. Where the blessing is on you so much that people know you're the blessing of God in the earth realm. How do you treat people that, are, that you know are a blessing? Like, you know they just, make, they, they, they just make a difference. How do you treat them? You said nicer? Huh? With respect? Come on. Grace, honor, come on, honor, reverence. Here's what the Holy Spirit gave me. Don't expect to experience more increase or more doors being open if you don't increase in your generosity and willingness to be the individual that opens up doors for other people. Everybody say generosity. Generosity means... By definition, you can Google this, nothing, you know, like so special, whatever, but just the basic meaning of generosity means the willingness and liberality in giving away one's money, time, in a magnificent way. Actually, it uses a different word. Magnamity. How many of you ever heard that word? I know there's two people in here. I knew those two would open it, raise their hand. Three people, yep, you old smart people, you. I got to look up stuff like this. You understand what I'm saying? And I'll be honest with you. I still don't know what that word magnanimity means, but I know it comes from mega. That's what I, I do know it comes from. An entity, listen to me, that causes gigantic mega transfer in our lives for us to be a mega blessing to everybody we come in contact with. Look at your neighbor and say, don't just bless me with a gift. Bless me with your money. Amen. And the lady said, Amen. well, brother ain't willing to cut break you off no bread, man. You ain't that first in his life. I'm just saying. My wife controls all the money. If she was doing something wrong with it, I really wouldn't know until like a bill come through or something and be like red letter or something, you know. She said, yes, you do. I don't. She manages it. I trust her. I trust her. I trust her. Even when we fight, I trust her. Even when she don't like me and I got to open, leave one eye open, I, I still trust her. You know why I can trust her? Because I know that she means me well. Amen. Even when she don't like me. She means me well. 
You know what I know? I know that she wants to see us blessed. So she's not going to squander anything. Woo! Come on, somebody. You want to be around people who want to see you blessed, who have a spirit of generosity. You know the people who will only give so much. Their white elephant gift is going to be $10, although the set amount agreed on was $25. And then some people, all they're going to do is $20, $25. But then there's always that one or two relatives that you know, their white elephant gift is going to be more than $25. And everybody be fighting over one whatever's in their box. Yeah. Woo! You got to hear me. You got to get to a place, listen to me, where people will be attracted to you because they know what's in your box is a blessing. Here's the big goal. Are you guys receiving this? Here's the big goal. Give me my time. Give me my time because I'm so full. Listen to me. All this is about about the Holy Ghost. Trust me. All right. One more time. Give it to me again. All right. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. That looked like 25 minutes. (laughs) All right. Here's the big goal. In 2024, in 2024, hear me. To put God first in everything. I said to put God first in everything. In everything you do, put God first. What are you saying, Pastor? Here's how we do that. First, to be generous to God. Second, to everyone else that we come in contact with. In other words, here's the challenge for this year. For you and I to be more of a blessing to those that that he brings into our presence. Why? Because we're representing him. We're positioned with him. And so there's a transfer that comes from him of increase. And, you know, as I'm thinking about it, you know, my spirit man is saying, I want mega increase in this next season. So, Father, right now, I don't know about you. Father, right now, I'm just going to open my mouth and decree and declare mega increase this year that will blow my mind and blow other people's mind. How many of you receive that? Let's talk about first fruits. We're, gonna, we're going to demonstrate, as we have for several years, here in the house of God, first fruits at the beginning of every year. When we talk about first fruits in Hebrews, it's, the Hebrew word is uh, mekarim, and it literally means promise to come. And there is one, hear this, there is one who never breaks his covenant promise to come and manifest himself. What are you saying, Pastor? When you keep the first thing first, through faith and obedience, you turn God's promise into provision. Why? Because he wants to see his people who honor him succeed greatly in that season of their life. He wants to see their farms increase More than the last season. Why? Because the farmer understands that I have no problems with taking, listen to me, something off the top of the harvest that I experience in this new season to bless God because I'm setting up my next season for a greater increase. And the increase is not just to get us fat. The blessing isn't for us to be flat. Fat. The blessing is for us to be a blessing. So he wants to see you and I prosper. And, and listen to me. Stop allowing this disease, this poverty spirit, that every time somebody talks about money, you go like, oh, what they're trying to get to me. How about what they're trying to get to you? I want you to evaluate your relationship with money. Because I want to share something with you. If you don't feel like, listen to me, you have a harvest coming, because you know it in your heart, you you haven't done anything to warrant the harvest. 
then you're operating a scarcity mindset. Which means you'll be hesitant to give. You're reluctant to give. Which sometimes places you in this position of stinginess. I'll give this, but I won't give that. Why? Because I, I might not have enough. But the revelation of first fruit or the principle of first is that if I place God first and everything I have, watch this, I understand belongs to him. He, he will make sure that, listen to me, I don't experience scarcity. Translation, I don't experience lack. Translation, even if you have a moment where your cover gets low, somebody supernaturally will deliver something to you. Come on, somebody. I remember my big mama used to say, Tony, I don't worry. The Lord takes care of me. He provides everything. You know, remember that song? And he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, when you want him, but he's right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. See, the old folk used to sing that. Y'all young people don't know nothing about that. You don't have no revelation. You know why? Old folks knew that they placed God first. Watch it. They weren't real smart. Watch this. But they were smart enough to know where their blessing come from. They were smart enough to know, watch this, who their God was. They were smart enough to know that they weren't going to lean to their own understanding. Come on. But in all their ways, acknowledge him. And watch this. They knew this. God would not forsake them. So even when I'm at my lowest moment, he's, he's my on-time God. Why? In the Hebrew, because he's coming. He's coming. He promised me that he's coming. Coming with what, Pastor? The blessing. Coming with what, Pastor? The increase that you need. Your job may not give you an increase that is equivalent to inflation or your worth. But God says, watch this, as long as you place me first, I'm first. I'm numero uno. You're operating in my law, and I'll make sure. Watch this. I come unto you. You can't even be heavy laden with burdens. Why? Because God says, I care about you. Whatever is, watch this, whatever is weighing on you, give it to me, God says. Because you recognize, watch this, I'm the first one that can handle whatever your problem is. And I will handle the problem. Somebody say, God will handle the problem. I love what Leviticus 23, 9 says. Let me know what time I have. It says, when you come into the land which I gave you and reap its harvest and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. So again, the first fruits, the first represents the total. I'll say it again. The first represents the total. That's why in, in the old days, listen to me, uh, uh, God required families to give their first child, child to him. All throughout the Old Testament, the first child needed to be dedicated to God. Because, listen to me, because of the blessing of giving, the sacrifice of giving your first son, your first daughter, specifically your son to God, hear me, all the rest of them would be set up for the blessing. Why? Out of what you did. In giving of your very best. Are you with me? Yeah. So again, we go back to Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all your what? Of all your increase. With the first fruits of all your increase. The first paycheck you get. Come on. Watch this. The first of whatever it is that you've done that has caused Watch this, increase. Ah, whatever that is, I'm going to honor you with. It could be $200. It could be $2,000. It could be $1,000. But whatever that first is that you're experiencing in this season, God says, honor me first. And I'll set up, listen to me, the next 11 months of the year. And so it says, and the first fruits of your increase, so your barns. Somebody say bank account. 
will be filled with what? With what? Plenty. Increase. And your fats will overflow. How many, how many people like overflow? You ever experience overflow moments? It's nothing like an overflow moment. Like, see, un, un, overflow moments are unexpected. Anybody want to experience more overflow moments this year? Amen. See, blessings flow through our heart's position of love for our obedience to God. All right, two minutes. What do I got? 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 Hate to do this. Okay, good. Good. Praise the Lord. All right, so let's get this clear for those of you who are note takers. When we understand that the blessing of God is a result of our position, specifically our heart's position, our love for God, and our willingness to prioritize his word to trump everything else, now what happens is this is called the divine establishment of God's order, which is actually the root the foundation, hear me, that governs everything else that's going to happen in your life. Here's what Romans eleven sixteen 16 says. Everybody read. For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Woo! Come on. If at the core of who I am, watch this, I choose, I desire, watch this, to live holy. Come on. Do the right thing. Be the righteousness of God. Let me share something with you. Every branch, every, every part of my being is going to produce. I, I, my, my heart's desire is that everything you set your hands to do this year will cause increase in your life. Amen. How many people plan on doing some new things this year? Ooh, look at their hands. Look at their hands. Come on, keep your hands up. Father, I decree and declare. That you said you, you, you will bring to pass a man's desire whose heart is set on you. So, Father, as they position themselves, as we position ourselves with you this day to do new business ventures, to do something different, to launch out into fields and, and, and oceans that we've never been on before, I thank and praise you that there will be a mega blessing and increase in those areas of our lives that we endeavor to do this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise if you receive that. So here's what, what I want you to understand. God claims the first of all things. God, what? God claims the first of all things. So here's what we have to walk in the revelation of. Everything I have belongs to him rightfully belongs to him because if it wasn't for him I wouldn't have what I have come on so when we apply the principle of first fruits we see that all firsts should be given to the Lord and the first day of the well, let's do it, the first of the day the first of the week uh, Sabbath first the first month and the first of our harvest it's the principle of first it belongs to you this is not mine this is yours. This is just my way of saying thank you, Lord, for what you did bless me with. Now, this has nothing to do with tithes. But if we were to talk about tithes, are you telling me that the waiter at the restaurant who now, when's the last time you've been to a restaurant? Do you know that they now have the audacity to go beyond 20%? It used to be they started like 15, 18, 20. Now, they starting at 18, 20, 25. Really? Put in, and putting another service charge on you. When we were looking at doing the Valentine's event, so I was already factoring in based on $125 a ticket what the tax would be. Right? Then they had the nerves to throw in a gratuity as well as a service charge. It's like, wait a minute, you charged me tax? Now you want a gratuity. Okay. And now you want a service charge. When did the service charge no longer be a part of 
the gratuity. So now you 3 x in me on 125. So what tax was 10%, come on, work with me. Got it? Be added to that. Now you want a gratuity that's commensable to 20% and a service charge. And who? just because you in my presence, you up in my spot. Come on, work with me. So how dare we not want to give God more than 20%? Forget a tithe. How much do you value what God adds to your life? Because that restaurant, that event facility is saying, how much do you value being up here in our spot? Woo! Come on, are you with me? So here's what Jesus declared. I'm going to wrap it up. Jesus declared in Matthew 6, 22, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. So we see that God adds the things to you when the foundation is placed, listen to me, is positioned and built right. So when we honor God with the first fruit, he will unlock everything for the remainder of the year. Watch this. More power, more authority. More doors being opened up. So we put God first in praying. When we wake up, we have no problems with praying, talking to God. When we wake up, we have no problems with getting, getting in the prayer room. Come on. It all it is is a telephone number. Watch this. When we place God first, we have no problems with praying. We have no problems with planning. You got to factor him into your plans. You want him to bless your plans, but you don't want to factor him into the plans? Come on. Where do you want to be 365 days from today? See, it's all predicated on our willingness to place God first 24-7, 365 days out of the year. And so that feeds into the offering. Here's what we have to understand. Money. Everybody repeat after me. Money, Money. is simply a tool and a medium for exchange. So when money is handled right, it will never choke your commitment, your covenant commitment to God to honor him. What are you saying? When we prioritize giving to God's kingdom, we can experience something greater and bigger that was beyond our imagination. Here's what C.S. Lewis wrote. When first things are put first, second things are not suppressed, but increased. I'll give it to you one more time. He said, when first things are put first, second things are not suppressed, but increased. On January 27th, next Sunday, everyone, I compel everyone to give your best first fruit. Some of you already started giving it. But there's beauty when we come together to give it together as a family of faith. What does this do? This helps us with first quarter expenses. It helps us to do some things that we need to do. So you're honoring God by assisting in our kingdom assignment to do what it is that he's called us to do. How well, you know everything costs? This is good what we do, and the gospel is free, but it just costs to get it out. Amen? Amen. Costs to get it out. Amen. We have to have new staffing, new equipment, all of these things. P.S. Some of y'all that promised to give towards the equipment and stuff, you know, you can bring it next week. Praise the Lord. Amen. We was expecting it last month, but you can bring it next month. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Are you guys up for prioritizing God as numero uno this year in your life. I'm done. I thank you for yours. Praise God. Hallelujah.